is looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, Rat Sound Review Network has plenty of shows to choose from. Like Rat Sound Review, where they discuss the latest rock and metal news, as well as interviews and albums. Album vs. Album, the King Diamond Podcast, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and sometimes this guy. Smack him a gob! Ralph Vieira is also on our network with the Vieira Vault. There's also Old Man Metal's Musings, where he discusses heavy metal and beer. Music is Life with Lou Mavs. The Right Opinion for Those Who Love Politics. A South Park podcast called Suck My Balls. The Infinite Fringe. A watch-along wrestling show called Beyond Bushido. Next Stradivarius guitarist, the Timo Tolki podcast. And the great Harry Barnett with I Don't Even Like Podcasts. So check out RatSoundReview.com or search RatSoundReview on YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. Pissed off this one girl I was talking to so bad the other day because her, the Grinch who stole Christmas, the Jim Carrey one's her favorite movie of all fucking times. Mm-hmm. And I said, Oh, yeah, you want to prove to you how fucking terrible the, that movie is and how fucked up it is? She's like, How? I was like, Well, the Grinch lives where all the Christmas presents get thrown away to, right? And she's like, Yeah. I said, Okay, how'd that fucking dog get there? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. The minute I said that, she just said, fuck you, and she didn't talk to me for three days. It was wonderful. <laughs> you ruined the Christmas <laughs> special. And- it's time for Rat Salad Review with your hosts, Wayne Noon, Greg Norgal, and Nate Lander. Actually, about the pandemic that almost no one else will ever be able to say or top. The last concert I got to see before we all got locked down was Impaler giving an acoustic show at a museum. Yeah. Oh, Jesus oh really? Yeah. Well, that's where they, there's all kinds of old things at museums, you know, so they said, well, we'll have to. Do. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get those fossils yeah. in here. That was yeah. a fun night. That was a really cool. It uh, was. It was fun because we've cool never game. done. I think I told you that last last time that we never done a an unplugged show before, and those uh, heads don't even have acoustic guitars. So we had to go to the guitar shop where our guitar player works part time and borrow acoustic guitars to to do the acoustic <laughs> set. But yeah, it was really fun. I do one again, and yeah, it was like three days later they shut everything shut everything. down. Everything. Yeah, that was our last show. It was an acoustic show. So I hope we get to play one more time so we can plug in at least, you know. And that was in Minnesota? Yeah. Minnesota, yeah. Oh, wow. Right at the, the it's at the Minnesota History Museum. They have they had a big uh, um, display of uh, First Avenue, uh, yeah. History of First Avenue. And the the set we did was in conjunction with that. They had a music trivia night and we played music and yeah, so it was fun. Yeah, I actually got to wrestle at First Avenue because there's an independent wrestler named Eric Cannon mm-hmm. who used to run shows in Minnesota like out of hell. there. Huh? Wrestle Like Hell. Yeah, Wrestle Like Hell. Yeah, that was the one sponsored by Pabst Blue Ribbon, and we did a show up there. <laughs> <laughs> it was the greatest thing ever. They had a Pabst oh, Ribbon TV title. Ever. They had a uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon canvas with oh the Oh my god! Did blue. like the belt have the blue ribbon as the buckle? That'd be it, fucking it, amazing. It was, Wait, it was Dennis Hopper the announcer? I'd wear that yes. every day. <laughs> I wish. Oh, <laughs> me too. That'd be I wish. I I'll just wear it down to Target to get toilet paper and stuff if I had a PDI wrestling. <laughs> I'd walk around with my, keep my pants up for the rest. I walk of around with my pelvis pointed out like I was wearing a cod piece or some shit. <laughs> I just oh, like Chris Dickinson in the 80s? Because it was a tour. It was a whole tour. We did 
We started in uh, Ebor, Libor City, Florida, which is a which is a bar city. Mm-hmm. Then we went to Jacksonville. Then we went to um, uh, through Georgia and the Carolinas and everything, all the way up to Minnesota. And then our last night was in uh, Waterbury, Connecticut, which Pat Blue Ribbon. That's where they're based out of now is Waterbury. But we did a two week tour where we were just doing shows at these really cool music venues all across the eastern seaboard and up all the way to minnesota we yeah. did uh, where were we in michigan we were somewhere really crazy in michigan oh shit um god damn it famous music venue um the famous one in detroit oh in detroit uh cobo hall no not cobo hall that's too big this was a bar concert hall venue harpos 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 yes we did harpos mm-hmm. and um while we were in Minnesota, I made it a point to try and find Grandma B's, which was the place that the Road Warriors and Rick Rude and uh, John Nord and all them used to bounce at. Like, before they got, when they were wrestling and they needed to make side hustle money, they used to bounce at this fucking hardcore-ass biker bar called Grandma B's. Now it's and, a pizza place. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. And I get there, and now it's a fucking pizza place. And so... <laughs> I call I call Road Warrior Animal. I was like, "Yo, you couldn't use some of your son's fucking NFL money to save Grandma B, so we have a shit." <laughs> Should be a shrine. Yeah, Rick Rude worked there. Yeah, uh, Road Warriors, yeah. Uh, John Nord, Kurt Henning, they all worked there, and they used to beat. And it was the best because, like, they all would tell stories about Grandma B's, and apparently there was like this like little fence that was just shin high. That was like a little like chain fence. And that used to be the game is they'd push people out the door and see how many flips they could get people to do over the trip wire. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep yourself entertained when you're bouncing, you know. Oh, Jesus, it's the worst. Drunk the people. Worst. Drunk people, drunk people. Yes. Crazy. But yeah. No, so wait, when are we starting this? I'm going to start it right now. We, I'm just going to start I, it right I here. I thought we had already started. We kind of did. So There's a stupid I, thing that's up here says Microsoft update, close or actions. I don't know. You guys don't uh, see that, do you? No. no. Just okay, close. then I'll just leave it. <laughs> yeah. We don't need to mess it up. Then you'll be gone. Yeah, be... I'll, I'll end up hanging up the goddamn yeah. conversation. <laughs> <laughs> But we are here with uh, Bill Lindsay from Impaler. Once again, welcome back, Bill. It was hey. only a few months ago that you were here. Well, I'm so pleased to be back. Thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah, we had a lot of fun last oh, time. We talked back. a lot about uh, your music, and then we all of a sudden got into wrestling, which I thought was really cool. And then uh, you, a couple of days ago, you sent me uh, one of your new songs. Uh, what was it? Krampus? Uh, Krampus uh, oh, my God. Has returned. It? Yeah, Krampus, Krampus has, has returned. returned. Yes. Yep. And uh, then you sent me a couple more, and then I asked you to come back on the show, and you said yes, but you want to talk about wrestling, so that's why well, I said yeah. Eric Adams that was here, kind of a stipulation. Thanks for it. <laughs> and here <laughs> I am. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> or just ask him, and he'll show up. There that's he is. That's right. Yeah, I and Eric no has uh, that's, he has no life, and he isn't doing anything. So yes, <laughs> Jesus wept. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I got to tell you, thank you for coming on here. But I got to talk to you real quick about your music. Uh, Wayne introduced me to it today. Um, I was really getting into the title track of your latest album, uh, The Great Hereafter. Um, I love all the different sounds. I love the, the, the mixture. I feel a lot of some of my favorite metal bands of the past. I feel some Sodom. I feel some Motorhead. I feel some Voivod in that sound. Uh, what was some of the influences to go into this? Yeah. Well, thank you, first of all. Yeah. I mean, just... Uh, Motorhead is huge influence. I mean, they changed my musical DNA when I heard Motorhead, and, and then they we just celebrated what forty years of forty years of Ace of Spades like, on yeah. November eighth. So, uh, yeah, Motorhead is huge. And then, uh, I mean, uh, you know, when we came up in 1983, when we formed, you know, Voivod was forming and Sodom was forming. All these bands, you know, Bathory, everybody. So, I think we were all filtering our influences that we all had, you know, as young youngsters, young guys, teenagers, young musicians. And so I think there's a lot of aspects to uh, those different influences in all of the bands that kind of came up at that time. Slayer, you know, Metallica. 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was listening to the songs. Uh, actually, listen, right before we came on here, I was listening to them again. And uh, there's some really, really good. Those three songs, they're really good. You well, know, thank you. I, th- I there's been a lot it. of good music coming out this year. I had another guest on earlier today. And uh, yeah, he's got a really good album, too. And then you know, you're putting out this album. And like I told him, I'm like, I'd like to try to pick like who's going to like be like a, a good album for the year. And, and it's just like almost impossible because everybody seems to be putting out good music this year. I don't know if it's because of like everybody's shut down and everybody's uh, home and they got nothing to do and they're being creative and they're making really good music, you know? Yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, that, that was our kind of thing with going forward with this album is we've got this downtime. We're not going to be playing any shows when we rehearse. We don't have to run through our set because we're not playing a set anytime soon. Mm. So let's write new music, you know, and we just got our creative juices flowing and we, and we we put a time limit on ourselves we're gonna because we didn't know how long COVID was gonna go on no one yeah. no one knows yeah. but uh so we, we got together in very early june and said we're gonna what we uh create by mid-september is what we're gonna book the time and we're gonna go in and then we're gonna record what we've what we've created and that's what we did so yeah 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 so, so the COVID summer soundtrack i guess you'd call it <laughs> yeah it definitely sounds like that and and the uh the production is is awesome i love the, the way the album and the music sounds on it too it's really great well, um we recorded at a really great studio 1459 will Morales. he's just great to work with and he's he's huge in the metal community here he he got this uh huge beautiful practice space and he's put his studio in there and stuff and just provides a nice environment for musicians you know to to go and rehearse and and to record their music and uh and he's in a few different bands he's he's a great guy and and mm-hmm. he's really blossomed as a uh, engineer and and producer too so he I, I i think it just sounds really great yeah it does yeah it uh it does and it's funny because yeah billy you just mentioned 40 years at ace of spades that was one thing i was uh going to say you know these three songs, they give off that uh, that vibe that that album had. It has that very crisp, alive, yet dirty sound to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean... Right, right, right down to your ha-ha. In we, have that, <laughs> we have a crusty edge about us, as you know, so that's just going to come out naturally, you know, the crust. Okay. But, um, yeah, I mean, just Motorhead was was huge and i mean i grew up in the 70s and we talked about this before but it was uh you know alice cooper and kiss the plasmatics uh all the 70s bands like aerosmith in the 70s huge influence to me and black sabbath uh sabotage is like my favorite sabbath album i mean they're all really my favorite but sabotage sticks out um zeppelin i mean every deep purple you write deep, all that stuff, you know, because I'm older, so I I was into that stuff at the time, and yeah. I got to see a lot of those bands, and so all of that's a part of me, you know, right through Zeppelin, uh, Van Halen, uh, Stars, Angel, UFO, Judas Priest. I mean, I can go on and on, you know. It was just I would go oh, yeah. ACDC. I pursued but, that. That's what I would look. Yeah. And, and bought and and you know spent my money on records and concert tickets and, and that's yeah. what i uh that, that's what uh i absorbed and that's what comes out in my music as well as pro wrestling and cartoons and comic books and <laughs> sci-fi and horror and how we, all those things too are mixed in there too so yeah it's a real hodgepodge yeah you see it's interesting that you bring up uriah heap Because what a lot of people don't know is when Kevin Sullivan was doing his Army of Darkness uh, gimmick down in Florida, Championship Wrestling, back in the early 80s, he actually actually took the name from a Uriah Heap album, which was Army of Darkness. And uh, that's, I mean, excuse me, that song, that's where he got the idea for the whole Army of Darkness character with Luna the Fallen Angel and everything like that that they did. And uh, so metal and wrestling have always kind of gone hand in hand. Um, have you ever done any songs that you feel that really showed your love of professional wrestling in them? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We got a song called uh, 
It's the Santo versus the world, which is about El Santo, a mass wrestler from Mexico. Uh, he was like the Mexican Batman. If people that don't know who he was or, you know, he was in all these movies and he was always fighting monsters and, you know, and then there was always a wrestling match involved in the movie at some point. Yes. And then we have another song called Cage Match Tragedy. And that's a, uh, uh, that's on One Nation Underground. Nice. Uh, yeah. And then uh, we have a song that's been in the works and, and we were going to try and it, it didn't make this album because we didn't we didn't get it. We didn't pull the trigger on it uh, because it's constantly this evolving thing called Dead Wrestlers Heaven. And uh, it's like it, it's uh, the basis of it is written, but it's constantly there's constantly new wrestlers passing away to add to this list, you know, so yeah, they're. they're Man, they drop like flies, don't they? I mean, <laughs> they we do. just lost one today right. that, I mean, you growing up in Minnesota, you know firsthand, you, you've seen before, you know, Pat Patterson, who's one mm -hmm. of the greatest minds in professional wrestling history. Of course, him and Ray the Crippler Stevens were the blonde bombers up there for you guys in Minnesota. Uh, do you have any memories of seeing Pat Patterson live and uh, growing up in the AWA territory? Yeah, I saw Pat Patterson wrestle and... Uh, um, it, at the very late seventies, when I was uh, just getting out of high school, we when we started driving, we could drive over to the Minneapolis Auditorium and see matches. Um, he he did a lot. He was doing solo matches, and he wasn't teamed up with, or, or he'd team up with somebody like Bobby the Brain Heenan for, you know, for a little feud, you know, that they put together uh, yeah. with uh, Rock and Roll Buck Sumoff and somebody else, you know. But I definitely saw him wrestle. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, and on for, TV, count, countless times on TV. Oh yeah, absolutely. See, what a lot of people don't understand is just how important to the professional wrestling business Pat Patterson was. I mean, my favorite pay per view every year isn't WrestleMania. I love WrestleMania, and I think it's a great showcase for the professional wrestling business. Mine happens to be the Royal Rumble, which is something that mm. Pat Patterson created. Mm. And a lot of people don't understand. Pat Patterson came up with the ideas, not just the Royal Rumble match, but for many of these big matches that we'd come to see later. I mean, he he was the mind behind the Hell in the Cell. He was the mind behind uh, the Royal Rumble. He was the mind behind the King of the Ring. You know, all these other great memories. Um, what are some of your memories that you have of Pat Patterson and like his ideas that you saw come to fruition? Well, you know, just okay. So I grew up in the '60s watching AWA with my grandpa, and uh, and then to the early '70s. So I used to see him wrestle on television in the tag team sense. And I guess uh, you know um, they just helped lay the foundation for the heel tag teams, you know, uh, that would come later. And uh, I think yeah. that's a huge contribution that he inspired other wrestlers to want to be wrestlers and to to be good heels, you know. Yeah, you see, my my memories are a little different from yours uh, because I grew up in the WWF New York territory, like Wayne. So, my favorite match memory of Pat Patterson still has to be the New York City back uh, Backstreet Brawl between him and Slaughter. Uh, it was a match where there was no referee, and it was just him and Slaughter just bleeding like stuck pigs and beating the hell out of each other. For like a good 20 minutes and uh it's on the network i recommend everybody watch it um if you want to see a bad guy sergeant slaughter versus a good guy pat patterson and just watch how a, a fight should be done in professional wrestling to me that's 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 just chef's kiss fucking awesome i'll have to look it up so <laughs> yeah i've never it, seen that what what was the mat what what was the match called, or how would I find that if I wanted to watch it on YouTube? Uh, if you want to watch it on YouTube, you just type in Pat Patterson versus Sar Sergeant Slaughter. It is on the network. I'm positive oh. it's on the network, if you have that, but I'll check real yeah. quick. WWE Network, not the Red Cell Review Network. Yes. You <laughs> know like what? It, it might be, wrestling. honestly. I might go ahead and put it on Beyond Bushido just to, for the hell of it. Yeah, it's going to be uh, listed as WWF's Greatest Matches. Sergeant Slaughter versus Pat Patterson alley fight. And they got the whole match online, all 20 minutes of it. And it's, they have the buildup, which is the Sergeant Slaughter Cobra clutch uh, challenge. But yeah, they have the whole match on there. And it's, it's really a classic in wrestling. Um, I put that brawl up there with uh, 
shit, I'd put it up there with Brody and Abdullah. I'd put it up there with uh, the old school Ronnie Garvin, Ric Flair brawls that they that you used to be able to, uh, not Ric Flair, Ronnie Garvin and uh, the Ar- Archie, the Mongolian stomper uh, fist fights you'd see back in the day, or even JYD, Butch Reed, and, and, uh, UW, and uh, UWF, Bill Watts' Mid South. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely check it out. It's on good advisement. Oh, it's it's tremendous. It really is. You can find it on YouTube. And since it is on YouTube, it will be on this tomorrow's episode of Beyond Bushido. We will be showing that. You know who it was that, that he wrestled with a lot here? Nick Bockwinkle. He was part of the Heenan family for a while. Yeah. So he wrestled with Bockwinkle in, in some tag team stuff before Bockwinkle, you know, went on as a singles, you know, and he was the heavyweight See. champion many times over here. Yeah, you see, that's what I used to love about the AWA because I got to watch all this footage uh, when I started tape trading. Mm-hmm. And uh, I ran across one by mistake, which was uh, Greg Gagne versus the Masked Marauder. Mm-hmm. And they were it was this masked man, and the guy on commentary is like, and who is this masked marauder attacking Greg Gagne and everything? And then all of a sudden the mask comes off, and it's Bruiser Brody. Uh-huh. I was like, wait, Brody was in AWA? Okay, yeah, I gotta watch this. So. Yeah, I work for the Sheik. The Sheik pays me good money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I started watching all the old AWA stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, oh shit, I just forgot what I was fucking talking about. God damn it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, you said that's what you love about the AWA. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I was going back watching the Bobby Heenan stuff back then because. Uh, back then, it was Heenan, it was Stevens, Bockwinkle, and Patterson would come in every so often. And you could see Ray Stevens and Bockwinkle team, or you could see Heenan team with one of the other guys. Mm-hmm. But you couldn't see those other guys doing what Heenan did. Heenan proved to be a very big asset in this business as a multi-tier talent. Not just as a, oh. as a manager and as a promo guy. But even in the ring, he could fill that spot every time, and you wouldn't see a loss in seats. Yeah. Him and Greg Gagne had a, a big feud where uh, it, the weasel suit, do you know that? The, the weasel suit, the that weasel was where suit. it originated. Yeah. In. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, they had a feud, and they it was uh, culminated in this weasel suit match where um, uh, Greg put Burns' sleeper hold on, on Heenan and knocked him out and then put him into this weasel suit. And then, you know, he woke up and he was in the weasel suit. And it was, it was amazing. It was great. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually really funny. Um, when I went to WrestleMania two years ago, they have, because Heenan brought the weasel suit from AWA, he held on to it. Mm-hmm. So when they did the same thing with him in the Ultimate Warrior, where the warrior put him in the suit, it was the same suit. And so now, when they do the fan access, you actually they actually still have that original weasel suit, and I got to see it up close and everything, and I thought that was really cool. Nice, that's that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm asking a million questions here. We got we three other guys here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know I anything forgot. about wrestling, so I'm kind of zoning out here. I mean, well, I know a lot of names we had and with wrestlers, but like, I don't know. Anything about like watching wrestling? I Why are you guys talking, talking wrestling? wrestling? This is Red Salad Review. It's named after <laughs> Black Sabbath song. Damn it! I don't play. Well, we have your wrestling show on our network, I'm so it, it, it all yeah. ties in. That's the way of me making fun of my own business, Wayne. Okay. If Ozzy Osbourne could wrestle against Ozzy Osbourne, was at a WrestleMania? It yes, was. he was, and he hosted an episode of Monday Night Raw. He came out with the uh, British Bulldog. Both of them with Bulldog, yeah, right. with Dynamite, and with announcer. And then Alice ever. Cooper came out with uh, Jake the Snake. One wrestle, Jake the Snake that Roberts, sense. WrestleMania three. Yes, I was watching a Jake the Snake interview on Joe Rogan. He said he had the same snake trainer as Alice Cooper, so that's probably yep. Yeah, yep. that's how it happened. That was how they met. Yeah, yeah, that makes. That's sense. also what led to the big Cobra incident with the Macho Man. Yeah, that's I fucking heard about that. That's awesome. I know about that. I heard that yeah. story. I've heard and, both men tell the story, and it's tremendous because <laughs> Macho Man was nuts. He's like, yeah, you know, and so I just had to tell him, you know, 
I wanted to see that motherfucker get bit by that thing. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. Because I didn't know if it was poisonous or not. I was making money, brother. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was making (laughs) money. And if I go out, then the snake can slither in. And then he's making the money, Uh uh-huh. So I made that bitch get bit by that fucking snake just to make sure that he wasn't trying to fuck me, brother. Yeah, he wasn't trying to fuck me because I wasn't going to let that happen. Uh Uh-uh, no. (laughs) <laughs> this is like when Mike Tyson was on cocaine back in the 90s. <laughs> and oh. he, would talk on, he would just be in interviews and shit, and he'd just go all over the place. That so, macho man talking in real life everywhere yeah, exactly. he went at all times. So yeah. I'm also cocaine. Oh, well, I, cocaine's I a hell of a drug. I, I met uh, you know, Gary Busey a few times since he had the brain injury, and he is very much all about that. And he will just. <laughs> switch gears in the middle of what he's saying and um and like god what the fuck were we talking about oh i was last time i saw him i was talking to him at a horror con and we were talking about silver bullet and he's talking about the effects and different things they did in the movie and then he just starts going off into this long motivational speech about how nice the sky looks and love and life i'm like all right gary <laughs> <laughs> i want what he's Thanks. having <laughs> you guys have to see two things with Gary Busey that's happened recently. First, he did a Christian movie. Oh my God. Tremendous. <laughs> he did a Christian movie, and it is the greatest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Him just doing one of those Christian crazy movies and stuff like that. Better than yeah. Kevin Sorbo. Oh, it's better than the Sorbo ones. Sorbo's Wait, pretty fucking funny. Sorbo is funny just to watch him like all skinny now and not gas up. Such a caricature of and nobody acts like that. <laughs> That's what's <laughs> fucking hilarious about it. I watched you write on this piece of paper, <laughs> God is <laughs> dead. <laughs> what? It's the what whole piece of the movie. Who the fuck would keep their job? <laughs> that is, there was what was the other thing? Oh, God. The other show is called I'm with Busey. Oh, God. oh, I've seen there, that. Yeah. This yeah, fucking I've guy is that, just yeah. hanging out with Gary Busey, and he just takes Gary Busey random places and just lets Busey run wild. And it is, it's fucking, oh, it is a, it is quality programming at its best. <laughs> it is I already quality. have that show. It's called Ozzy and Jack's World Detour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's another version, but this is even better. Because at least with Ozzy, you expect all this craziness. Oh, yeah. With Busey, you don't know when he's going to attack this guy, but you know what's coming. And he went to attack Howard Stern on the air, and they had to tackle him in studio for fuck's yep. sake. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, one, one interesting thing I I found about Ozzy and Jack's world tour is, um, <clears throat> you know, Ozzy really didn't talk about it until, I'm going to say, recently, even though it was a couple of years ago. But back when they were doing the Ariz original Osborne's reality show and all that crap. You know, he was like extra wild and totally insane. Well, he was relapsing then. Yeah. And I didn't know that at the time, but even though, you know, he's still got that mumbly voice and he's still Ozzy and he does crazy shit. He is so much more um lucid and just the way he um uh, I I don't really know how to describe it properly, but when, when he speaks and talks now, it's real answers instead of just, fuck yeah, man! <laughs> oh <my> God, <laughs> right. you know, still, I want, nice I'm going to buy a burrito. You want a burrito? Yeah. It's, it's, it's still so. the greatest Osborne's thing ever. Ever. I love, I love watching the greatest Osborne's dog. thing ever was when them fucking yuppie assholes moved into them on the 2003 yes. show, and they gave them crap. He went into the freezer and chucked a frozen ham right at them. Wacky <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. Sharon chucked the ham and said it looked like the owner's, the neighbor's ass. Yeah. And then Ozzy just took a giant rock while oh, Sharon's that's what it was. And yeah. he fucking just chucks the boulder over and says, we ain't going to hear from them no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's one. And then the other one, when Ozzy's hammered out of his fucking gourd and goes... Someone went in my room and they drank my beers. And she was like, Ozzy, nobody's been in your room. He's like, they were in my room and they drank my beers. And then she's like, who would have been in your room, Daddy? And he goes, uh... <laughs> That's his response. How did you not know he was relapsing at that point? Come on, man. 
love watching I, him try to work well, out Oak Hill. Or him finding yeah, the first, dog first shit around all, the house I all the time. Watch I remember that. Yeah. Of it. I, <laughs> I have never seen that one with the beers you're talking about. So, but either yeah, way, beers so we could aren't <laughs> Percocet. So, you know. No. We've got to do one rat sound review where we just watch the Osborne clips because they're yes. all like. I loved it. Too, when he part of that was out. Sharon had cancer too, and that's part of what made that worse. Yeah. Where he couldn't figure out what, Bill? Oh, some of my favorite moments was when he couldn't like figure out the trash compactor or the dishwasher. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Still the Jack, television the remote. Back the fucking remote. <laughs> Jack, oh, the other one where he, he, this fucking television to work. <laughs> Where he got the, a new car or something, and it had like all these electronics inside the car, and he was trying to call people, and it wasn't working. Yeah. That shit was funny. Yeah. <laughs> but, when's, uh, when's the Bill Lindsay show coming out? We need a Bill Lindsay show. No, we, no, no. <laughs> get, get Pat Boone to do the, an Impaler cover. Yeah. Christmas yeah, with right. Crumpus. That will be the name of your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the new Pat Boone single. <laughs> Crack that whip. He needs something <laughs> sexual. <laughs> hey, when we talked last time, did I tell you this was a positive thing in 2020? I can't remember it's the fun. timeline, but um, did I tell you I got to talk to Alice Cooper on the phone? Oh, wow. No, oh, you cool. didn't. Cool. I, yeah. You did, but awesome. tell it again if you didn't. Did I tell it? Oh, tell us. I want to know this. I never I don't think you story. did. I don't oh, really okay. remember. Yeah. That was a cool thing that happened because, well, so I worked at uh, Bethesda Hospital, which was a COVID hospital. They switched it and made it into a COVID hospital. And uh, so uh, they had a thing on Nights with Alice Cooper where they were uh, um, paying tribute to healthcare, frontline healthcare workers, you know. So uh, I just thought, well, I'll just throw my ring, my hat in the ring there. And so I sent a picture of me at work with, with you know, uh, some kind of mask on. And uh, so the producer of the show contacted me like the next day and said, uh, yeah, you know, so what do you do there? And asking me about my job and everything. I didn't say anything about my, my music or anything. I just completely spoke to her about me being a healthcare worker. And she said, uh, well, would you like to talk to Alice on the phone? I said, yeah, I would like to talk to Alice on the phone. <laughs> Give so, me a job, Alice. Well, so then. Uh, Get me out of here. They called me, so they said, call this number in five minutes. So I called this number, and a guy answers, and he said, yeah, I'm the engineer here. Here's Alice. And he goes, hey, Bill, how's Impaler doing? And I said, oh, wow. <laughs> what? So, he was, so I, I suppose you guys aren't playing gigs right now, you know, and he's, like, talking to me about Impaler, and I was, like, blown away because it was, like, I'd never said a word to them about that, and he and he knew, and he and he talked to me about Impaler and and other things too. But it was just like, holy shit, this is the greatest thing in my life. I guess <laughs> you wow, know. Awesome. I guess I can die now because I mean, yeah. I, you talk to him on the I mean, I mean, I love so many were. bands and and so many musicians, but like Alice is like the pin. You know, I mean, you can't go above Alice in my book, and Man. so for it was the best you know, stage show in all of metal. Said, I said, who's going to call me next, Steven Tyler or Paul <laughs> Ace Fraley? But, yeah, so that was really cool. And, that, yeah, that might have ha happened after we spoke last time. So that was that was a highlight. That's so awesome. But wow. but working in a COVID that's hospital, awesome. that's got to be intense, bro. That really has to be intense right now. Yeah. Well, it's gotten worse than it was then, especially in Minnesota, you know, when it was when it first broke here and we had lockdowns and stuff. Um the numbers were nothing like they are today. So yeah. it's gotten, you know, it's gotten really wacky. Yeah, I, I bet yeah. it has. And I mean, they it's just our hospital too. And I don't understand that the reasoning behind that, because the whole hospital was set up as a COVID specialty hospital, yeah. but uh, the corporation and all of their wisdom decided to close it down and they're making it into a homeless shelter right in the midst of a pandemic, you know, and it's like you had all this staff trained, you had the whole co hospital converted to a, to be a specialty hospital, and now you closed it. I, I don't know, but anyway, what are they why not just they turn, turn, turn the arena? Uh, turn, turn one of the arenas up there into a homeless shelter for the right. time being. There's right. no fucking sports going on. U.S. Bank right. Stadium fucking sucks anyway. 
I'd, I'd rather it be used as a homeless shelter. See his face? You see his face? Bill's about to say, all right, mother- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. You talk shit about my fucking Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> if, but, I, I never thought I could miss the Metrodome. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I saw some great stuff in the Metrodome. God, I saw Monsters of Rock in there. I saw the Twins all the time, of course. But, oh, yeah. Uh, and the Stones. Yeah. yeah. I only saw Metallica so far in Bank Stadium. I haven't seen a sporting yeah, event, but that I was saw, my first time seeing saw Metallica. Metallica. Yeah. yeah. So another question I want to ask that's music and wrestling related. Yes. <laughs> while on the road, have you ever had a chance to like, you know, while you're touring and everything on a day off, have you ever like tried to catch like a local independent show or a WWF or WCW show while you were on the road or anything? Well, usually, you know, you it's like that's how in so many ways, musicians and wrestlers are alike, you know, it's like we're both, we're lifers. And so we're, we're traveling and they're traveling. Uh, and there's so many things that are, are, are parallels in our lives, you know, cause we, we commit ourselves to this, this art form, whether yeah. it's wrestling or music, you know, and we drive around in crappy vehicles to get to our shows and, and, uh, you know, That's uh, but I, the point I'm getting to without rambling anymore is, yeah, usually I would love to do that, but usually like we're going to the next town. Yeah. Like I would like to see a lot more like roadside attractions and stuff like that, which we try and catch those things too. But there's so much more you could do if you had the time, but you don't because you're on the move. But uh, one time I've got a picture I should send it to you, Wayne. Uh, we are at a mall in um, Lincoln, Nebraska. And we were like right behind a WWF tour. So we were playing in a town like the night before or the night after the, the whiff was there. So uh, WWE. So uh, we were at this mall and there was uh, Jerry the King Lawler. He was just wandering around the mall looking in the storefronts. And so <laughs> I said, hey, Jerry, can I get a picture with you? You know, so I got a picture with him. So that was kind of the only time I really crossed paths with the wrestlers, you know, other than... Um, you know, we did some the zombie pub crawls. They've had some different wrestling alliances that came. That one that Billy Corrigan was. Um, yeah, that was uh, spearheading. Uh, at the... Fuck, what was the name of that one? Uh, assault? No, not assault. It was it was an A word. It was but based they, out of Illinois, and they would run there. And, yeah, they, uh, we played in the same venue that they did. They wrestled. You know, and we played. It was a. a intertwined with the zombie pub crawl but i talked to just incredible for a long time he was a great guy and just we talked about the parallels of wrestling and and music and being musicians and wrestlers because he plays guitar he's a musician too so uh, and he was great he was a really nice guy die hard 30 seconds to mars fan which i don't understand like he's got all their logos and symbols now tattooed on his arms just incredible uh, does yes Oh. Yeah, PJ, this has been like in the last year, he's become this huge 30 Seconds to Mars fan. Huh. And he's gotten like all their tattoos and everything now. And I don't know, maybe he's trying to join the cult and run away to the island with the rest of them. He got sent to that <laughs> camp from South Park that turns kids into emos. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what happened to him. But You uh, know, one of the greatest <laughs> tattoos, I was, so, I was really surprised about it and I never noticed it before, but we played with Venom Inc. and Mantis has a that huge a Ace Frehley. Show. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. And on my face. so meeting Mantis was awesome because <laughs> Venom was huge, you know, to me. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's got this huge Ace Frehley uh, tattoo on his forearm. Yeah, and I saw like, that. I was like, oh my God, that like Ace is my favorite guitar player, you know, and it's just like, and, and it's his too, obviously, because uh, it's a nice piece of ink. But I'd never noticed it before. But maybe he got it post Venom. I don't know. Probably, well, probably when he got uh, royalty. Yeah, I hung out with Demolition Man at that show. We were smoking oh, he was cigarettes. Great. Stuff. God, I fucking miss Lee's. That was a great show. Lee's was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Wait, so are you both in Minnesota? Yeah. They're uh, all three well, of these guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. I am the most local. I'm like, I, I, they're actually all in the same house. <laughs> oh, yeah. We used to go to Stillers before he turned it into a It kind of looks like we're all in the same house. It's Because like, you got, like, the same fucking door frame. Right really it's, it's dumb shit. I love that. Leave me alone, Bob. I'm doing my podcast. Dad, tell her. Yeah, Bill's my dad and I'm living in his basement. 
all my shit's like in boxes because we're moving. We got a new house, so oh, okay, like we've been living in this limbo. It's it's been the craziest thing because okay, on top of the COVID and all that shit, so they closed my hospital. So I had to get a. I started a new job. We decided we're going to get a new house. We're moving. Like my complete life is just like been in this limbo, you know, and it's just like. <laughs> Everything's in boxes. I can't wait to move. I'm going to miss my house. We've lived here 27 years, and I oh, love wow. it. Oh, wow. I've got a great lot, and I've got a woods behind me, and there's nobody behind me for miles. To the left and right, there's, but not behind me. There's nobody, and you sit on the deck, and the woods are back there. But we had a nice house, too, that we're moving into. I'm just ready to go now because I'm tired of living out of these boxes. And, like, my wife keeps putting mm-hmm. things away, you know, and you go to get a spoon. Like, where are the spoons? Oh, I packed them away, you know. <laughs> We got some covered. <laughs> so since the pandemic and everything, you guys have obviously, you know, been working on music and stuff still and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, have there been any talks about maybe what's going to happen post pandemic? You know, it looks like hopefully we have an opening coming now with the vaccine within the next couple of weeks. Um, have there been any talks about maybe the next tour? Well, no, I, I think we're going to wait and see how things pan out, you know. I'm as tired as uh, anybody of, of wearing a diaper on my face every day and and uh, just the whole thing, you know. I'm, I'm dying to play a show and, and play these new songs for people. Um, you know, I hope it's sooner than later. I really do. That's what I'm hoping for, you know. But uh, I'm going to stay cautiously optimistic and see how all that pans out. You Absolutely. Yeah. They want to give all the healthcare workers the the vaccine first, but I don't know. How do you guys? Do you think they've been working on that vaccine long enough? You know, it's just like it's, uh, it's, FDA it's, approved. So. Well, here's how I look at it: scientists never share their information. I've banged a couple in my lifetime, and I've learned that they don't share shit. So <laughs> when we went into lockdown, oh, they oh, all no. said, "Hey, disappear. here's what we got." And so once they said, hey, this is what we got, and they all stopped letting the ego get in the way, it was a really quick breakthrough. And I think scientists are learning, put your ego aside just so we can get through this. And so I'm very, very optimistic Mm -hmm. on this work now. And I have to be because I haven't been working. Um, Yeah, I mean, everybody disappeared. I just want to get back to shows. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. Wade is having a problem. Everybody, with it. everybody disappears. Is everybody still here? Yes, we are all oh, here. Wade has no idea that we're still here. I thought you just meant everybody disappeared because of COVID. <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah. <laughs> Look at my yeah, no. I thought you were right just now. saying something profound about the. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I think everybody Wayne disappeared. Just went blind. <laughs> You're about well, to grab the notepad. Hello. Oh, that's your song. Everybody. All right, the only person I see is uh, Nate on my screen. <laughs> look at the frustration in You're Wayne's face man. right now. Guys, look at the frustration in Wayne's favorite. face. You know that? There's no As frustration. <laughs> this is common. This is, happens all the time. Uh, so you can't see us, but you can hear us. Yeah. I can hear everybody, yes. Uh, I mean, luckily, uh, Greg well, is you're really not missing that much by not seeing us. Well, know? I don't know what's recording. That's the problem. Oh, no, it's all going. We're fine. I'm just glad to see Greg again, because last time me and Wayne and Greg tried to do something, poor <laughs> Greg. Oh, I got so oh, my mad God. trying to do that on StreamYard. <laughs> for, for context, though, we were doing these, uh, like, mystery sites theater type deals with uh over top of music videos and it just all kept freezing on me and i couldn't see or hear anything i screwed around with it for like an hour i got so mad i smoked a joint and went to bed <laughs> <laughs> you mean like beavis and butthead said so that's uh, enough of that he's the he best because he just kept freezing and going away that's like awesome. wayne just did why did wayne yeah, go away wayne disappeared now oh no I, I, it's, it's fixed now there we go oh okay. hey poor wayne i was gonna have cassie come over and help you out with that so. <laughs> <laughs> no, i figured it out there but um, what the heck what, 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 what are some of your favorite cities that you tour and that you like going to like where are you excited for once this all we get to a point where, where you can guys can go back out on the road. What are some of the cities you're excited to go play again in? Um, uh, I'll, a, any place that'll have us, I'm pretty happy about, you know. But or, 
Portland. Like I like some. Place. There's some favorite places of mine, like uh, Saint Vitus Bar in New York and Brooklyn. Yeah. I love that. Oh, uh, cool. This place called Dusk in Rhode Island was awesome. Uh, Reggie's in uh, Chicago is an amazing room. Um, th- those are some of my favorites. But I, I, I like every. I, I like everyone. <laughs> I'd love to see you guys here in Atlanta because before this pandemic hit, we started really seeing another uptick in metal here in, in Atlanta. I mean, for God's sakes, Watain sold 2,000 really? seats. Really? At, yeah, wow. at the Wow. Theater. Really? Yeah, Watain did that. King Diamond did a show over at the Tabernacle, which is like an old church. So it was perfectly fitting to have King oh, Diamond. Oh, dude. Tabernacle. Oh, it was one of my favorite shows I've been to. Uh, Overkill did a show out here. Uh, they did great. Like, th- there's a real, especially for, I'm not trying to, to box you in when I say this, but I feel a lot of thrash in your music. And it's there's like this feel of like a renaissance and thrash metal has really started to come back, especially with when I look up on TikTok and everything like that. You got all the metalcore kids and grindcore kids. But there's a lot of these kids who are getting into that thrash metal sound again. And I feel as if, you know, a band like Impaler really fits right in with that niche that's coming back again. See, I'm not the only one saying this shit. Man, that'd I've, be said, I've said that almost verbatim. Like, well, well <laughs> that that's whole, that you whole and I are statement. still young. Wayne's right. old and has children and... He's done with life. He ha- he doesn't even listen to his CDs no more. I'm just glad an older person who isn't like in a band. I don't do the show anymore. I'm leaving. CDs. Yeah, Wayne leaving. doesn't even open his CDs. All those CDs in there are still in the rack. <laughs> They're still They're in still the shrink wrap. Back- He's in the metal for the aesthetic purpose, <laughs> and he runs a podcast. This background it. is this is as real as a background as uh, Eric's background. <laughs> no, that <laughs> was actually real. <laughs> <laughs> when Sears went out of business, he got. A if you ever had an earthquake paper. over there in Long. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I have this because I'm poor, okay, and I don't want you all to just see my wall and my bed. So I'm going to use a fake background. Just, I mean, to... I'm not ashamed of it. <laughs> yeah, you're young. You can get away with that. We have a guest, and okay? Bill's moving, so he's got an excuse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, everything's tidy and in boxes, but it's just uh, yeah, boxes. It's fun. But but yeah, man. Like I said, you know. If you ever come down to Atlanta, you gotta. I'm definitely gonna be keeping up with you guys because I definitely co- love to come see it. Maybe we'll grab a beer afterwards. Absolutely. And, yeah. Uh, well, we put on an entertaining show, you know, and we we strive to entertain. So, uh, I, I we will entertain you. Definitely. What, yes. uh, what's the craziest thing you've done so far during your shows? I mean, you 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 put on this whole. It's almost like a theatric kind of show you do. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you mean by crazy? I mean. Crazy to you and to somebody else might be too. Yeah, different. well, crazy to people that would when they would go to your concert, they'd never seen you before. Like, what would some, be something that would be like, oh my god, you know, this guy's a fucking nut. <laughs> well, we've been doing disembowelings, like you yeah. know, before Guar. Yes. Really? Okay. Yeah. In 1983, we were calling deaths out of people. And uh, so, I mean, we do the disemboweling at the end of the show. The thing about our show is there's a lot of um, theatrical things that go on, but there's a lot of high energy too. You know, it's hmm. just like. Uh, I think we meld the two together really well in that yeah, because we strive to do that. Um, so it's it's a high energy, entertaining show in the sense that we're we're giving you 110 percent of the rock, and then we're also pulling guts out and and knocking on a severed head, and uh, you know getting uh, getting uh, slapped with a folding chair with barbed wire and all those kind of things, you know. <laughs> For oh shit, audience. hire me to be your guy. Here's a, here's a visual <laughs> representation of what I look like after one of their oh. sets. <laughs> that after the Taylor show? Yeah, that was after the Venom Inc. show. Was it? Yeah, oh, he cool. stirred in my face, dude. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it was me? <laughs> I don't recognize everyone out of makeup because you're all a bunch of old guys with beards and long hair. Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, wow. Wow. Good night, good night, good night everybody. Call, <laughs> call a spade a spade. No, I'm uh, the first one to tell. You know, if thrash yeah, metal you do does vocals, come back, maybe it'll be just huh? Yeah, you do the vocals, don't you? I, That's what I, well, I, if you want, I, to call, I caterwaul. I can you when? Yeah. I see you next. Go, go up the stairs and go slap him in the face. <laughs> 
I'm going to come down there and give you a whooping, son. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm sticking up for your set right here. You guys and are fucking And this fan. belt has meat hooks no, on it, boy. <laughs> yeah. Bill hard. probably remembers that, right? I tell you, it's Easter. You better go home and dye your eggs, son. <laughs> I don't know. By the time you guys were like the second band on, and by that time, I'm already about the <laughs> six pack in. So, yeah, no, that was a fun show. That was a great. Well, show. I'll tell you I what. You show. guys come to Atlanta. You could choke slam me through a table. So we'll have awesome. fun. With <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> And then we'll have Wayne to get hit with the Bob wire chair when we got there in New York. Play in Atlanta back in the uh, in the eighties after if we had brains came out. I want to say we played at a place called the Ritz or something, and it was in Atlanta. Yeah, the Ritz uh, was around. They closed uh, about seven or eight years ago, and uh, they lasted that long. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they lasted a pretty good long time. But there's so many music venues here now that. Um, it's it. It was time for an upgrade in venues. As as terrible as it is to say that, um, but there was an upgrade in venues. Like I said, there's a bunch of different metal venues. My only issue with Atlanta is the curse is there's always two fucking metal shows going on on the same fucking night. <laughs> That's what happens when you have too many metal clubs, right? Everybody's yeah. coming to. Uh, yeah, but it's on like weird nights. It's on nights I can go see shows. So, like, on a random Tuesday night, I'll never forget this, fucking Overkill is at one venue, and then you got goddamn, um, oh, shit, those fucking assholes. Um, <laughs> wow, what a name. Oh, them. No, <laughs> damn it. Um, uh, uh, the Bronx. We're in another club. So, it's like, for, and it was the Bronx doing their mariachi, their metal and mariachi set, where they did one set as the Bronx, and then the next <laughs> set as oh, El Bronx. Or El, El Bronx. Bronx. We so, played with Metalachi. <clears throat> yeah, that That's that was awesome. a cool show. I on New Year's Eve. One. Yeah, a couple of New Year's Eves ago. But yeah, yeah, we, yeah, think, yeah. Yeah, about three. But years the stage ago. show that goes into play. I mean, how much is that costing you guys to put something together with all that stuff? Hmm. I mean, that's got to be the hard... I'm sorry to ask that's a blunt question. 75 cents and some bailing wire. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we've been accumulating things over the years. We've been together, what, 38 years, you know? Yeah. And, like, a lot of stuff has come and gone and broken down, and then we've learned how to fix it and make it better. And, um, you know, it, it's really hard to put a a monetary price tag on that stuff. Well, but, there's uh, a there, there is a price tag to see it in concert, though at least. <laughs> so pay and go see it, you son of a bitches. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give me. You need me money. to be your hype man. Don't see Give fucking it's worth it. Give me some money. Did you ever have anything planned for a show and it ended up not going right or the way you wanted it to go? Oh, when we first started out, different things would happen. Like we had a cage. I used to come out of a cage, you know, at the beginning, like I'd be rattling the cage. Really? The fucking thing would fall oh apart. You know, a wall would fall off the side, you know. Uh, <laughs> when I was oh, I was about the front, opposite. You know? Like the uh, base layer and spinal tap. Yeah. Where you can't get out of it. Oh, we were doing that. <laughs> we were making mistakes like that before t- spinal tap ever came around, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, we had our guts. And it was it was hot. We played. Remember uh, Station Four, of course, Ryan's Corner. It was called. I still call it Ryan's Corner. But it was this hot club that never had any air conditioning in there in the in the wow. summertime. So we were playing a show, and we had our. We used to use real beef liver early on when we. Oh my god! So we were like, well, we got to keep <laughs> this from getting rancid because it's so hot in here and stuff. So we stuck it in container with the dry ice for the dry ice machine, and it came oh. time that we needed to the pull the liver out and put it together and it was frozen it was like it was frozen oh. solid you know <laughs> hey <laughs> so that, that oh, was pretty, you know and then i end up getting the 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 folding chair upside my head you know like where it's not supposed to be in it <laughs> ditches and just things like that that's yeah. awesome. It's definitely dangerous. But um I mean obviously just talking about that, there's a lot of wrestling influence in your shows. Um is there a lot of influence from like maybe the nineteen uh nineties Japanese deathmatch scene or any of that stuff that brought that uh that you were into? Like crazy stuff with uh, uh um well of course wrestling, huge. I mean, just like I, I grew up uh 
watching people uh, do their interviews, you know, and yeah. uh, I think that had a lot to do with uh, how we come across on stage. We're like a wrestling interview, you know. Yeah. And uh, that that's it's it's just profound how many different ways of wrestling has influenced yeah. and Taylor over the years. So yeah, have you ever had a chance to though watch some of like the old nineteen nine the nineties era Japanese deathmatch wrestling? Well, like when, when Terry Funk got the flaming chair thrown on him and that stuff. Oh uh, yeah, the stuff from Japan like that with Onita and them and the barbed wire exploding ring matches and stuff like that. You ever got to a I've chance to watch some of that of, stuff? Yeah, I've watched bits and pieces of it. Yeah, um, yeah it's crazy. At ECW, yeah. you know, when they before the WIF took them over. I mean, they were amazing, and and, and uh, that's probably where we put decided to put the barbed wire around the chair. You know. Yeah. So who were some of your favorite who are who were some of your favorite wrestlers like all time like if you had to put together an all-time list of some of your favorites Yeah, that's rough, isn't it? Well Yeah, I, I was a huge huge w Jesse Jesse Ventura was big on my list, but I mean he worked the stick uh, Billy superstar Billy Graham Yes he was here. Yeah, and of course Vern he was like the you know the, he had his own workout show in Minnesota. He had his own workout television show, like Jack Lalane. He was selling Geritol and you know doing Geritol ads and stuff back yeah. in the sixties. You know, but you and know he, he, he had his own board game, the Vern Gagne the wrestling good board guy. Game. He was the eternal face here, so you know yeah. he was always he was like my grandpa's favorite was Vern Gagne. You know, yeah, and um, and he got away with killing a man before he died. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you guys ever hear that story? Oh yeah, uh, yep. I actually, my my roommate actually worked there at the time. <laughs> oh, wow, really? Oh, at the uh, nursing home. Yeah, it was yep. an unfortunate situation, but uh, yeah. Vern's Alzheimer's had got really bad, and uh, him and another uh, one of the residents That's living at this uh, retirement home got into a fight, and Vern wound up just killing him. Put the sleeper oh. hold on him. Well, I think it what. I don't know if he killed him outright or broke his hip or something, and he died of the pneumonia from the complications or something. I'm not sure exactly. I, I don't know a, all the details. I just know that the person yeah, died. He, yeah. he 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 died later yeah. on in the hospital from complications caused yeah. by it. But um, no, he did beat him up pretty bad. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's sad. Um, it really is. Well, let's talk about Happy. Let's see who else. Brett the Hitman Hart. He's one of my favorites. Oh, Rick yeah. Flair. Um, you know, like some old school guys. So yeah. my, uh, I had a set of grandparents here and another set down in Texas and my grandpa loved wrestling here. And when I went down to Texas, my grandma loved wrestling and red Bastine. Do you remember red Bastine? Yeah, Red Bastine. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He was from Minnesota and he ended up, uh, there was a car crash and it killed, uh, Hercule, Hercules Hernandez and red was in the car with him. And then red left Minnesota after that, but he, surfaced down in Texas and he was the face, the baby face down in Texas when I was, you know, in uh, late grade school, junior high, when I was going to visit my grandma and we watched Texas wrestling and great Kabuki was there. And, and uh, so uh, Brody, Bruiser Brody, of course. Is amazing. Us. <laughs> I work for the Sheik. I just, when he, that whole thing was just great. That was a great angle here. Um, man, you know, I always appreciate the workers and I really, you know, uh, the, the luchadors, the, the lucha libre, that's, I, I really love that wrestling. See, cause yeah. it's, it's really got, it had to be a culture shock for you though, because Minnesota was really a wrestling wrestlers territory because it was led by Vern Gagne, uh, who was an alternate in the Olympics for Greco Roman wrestling and everything, you know, and all that. And, you know, Vern Gagne. Sure. Famous training guys like Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat, the Iron Sheik, um, Sergeant Slaughter. I mean, the list goes on and on of people that Vern Gagne trained. And then you start watching Texas wrestling. And in Texas, it's just all the way through, just punching, kicking, fighting and brawling and wilding out. I mean, it really, like, what was your initial imp uh, impression when you saw this Texas wrestling versus what you would see like in Minnesota? I just loved it all, you know, it was, 
it's just all like superheroes to me, you know. Yeah. Mm. I I didn't I think I was so young I didn't really notice a difference to tell you the truth. Uh, I just enjoyed it all. And then my grandma would just get into it. And I, she was half the show was watching her get, watch wrestling. You know, <laughs> I swear to God, it's like granny from the, from the Beverly Hillbillies, you know, get me, get him. Oh my God, he's got a chair, get him. Oh no, no. You know, she'd be just like all into it. <laughs> that I'm telling you guys, the best part of professional wrestling is on an indie level is the old women yeah. in the front row. Cause they will just, <laughs> They'll look sweet as can be, and then all of a sudden you hear, "Kill that son of a bitch right there! Kill him dead right where he fucking stands!" <laughs> Have you ever seen that book or uh, 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 Saturday Night at the Coliseum? Have you ever seen that? Oh, book? I love that book. I love that book. Yeah. I got a copy of it. Have you seen that, Wayne? There, I've heard of it. Yeah. 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 I'd love to get a copy of. It. There's a little uh, documentary about it on on youtube you can watch if you've never seen it that's pretty cool They're, they talk to some of those some of these oh, really? the, uh, super fans that would go to the matches every saturday night at the coliseum really? in houston yeah. yeah but yeah, there's it's, it's really great cool. black and white photography it's just really beautiful i get the guy is like award-winning photographer i think he went on to do other like work for newsweek or something like that later in his career but uh yeah see but saturday they night the gave us two great wrestling films they gave us the wrestler, which is the movie starring Vern Gagne and uh, and um, Billy uh, Billy Robinson, and you know there's all these other people who make cameo appearances and everything. But the other one was the one that they co-did with the Sheik. That's still one of my favorites. Called "I Like to Hurt People." I love to hurt Ooh. people. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was a good one. Yeah. I've got, I like. I've got it on VHS. Yes. Oh shit! Me and you are gonna have to talk after this. We might have to figure out an exchange, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would dig it out if I knew what box it was stuck in. <laughs> because yeah, I've got and, and then the wrestler, like we were talking about, that's one of my favorite ones. And there's a scene you can find it on YouTube. There's an old school scene where they set up this whole thing for Dusty Rhodes and Dick Murdoch because they were the Texas Outlaws at the time wrestling in Minnesota, and like they get into this bar fight scene. And it's pretty much what it was like traveling with Dusty Rhodes and Dick Murdoch every night. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I've heard all the stories. My one of my favorite scenes is that is the in the wrestler is the interview segment with Superstar and Marty O'Neill. Because so Marty O'Neill, I'll tell you a story about him, and, and it ties in with I told you guys this story last time, but just indulge me. So um, Marty O'Neill was. Before Mean Gene Okerlund in the AWA, he was the color, the commentator, the announcer, commentator. commentator. Yeah, thank you. And he, uh, he was just he was this little guy who wore these uh, glasses that you know had the they were always dark, and he was just tiny, and the wrestlers just looked so big around him, kind of like you know he was precursor to Mean Gene. But so he lived in between our house and my grandpa's house. My grandpa only lived like about two miles from us. So we'd watch Marty O'Neill on Saturday night interviewing, you know, all these wrestlers. And then he'd drive me home because it was pre-taped. So he'd drive me home and we'd go by Marty O'Neill's house and he'd be out in the front watering his grass. And my grandpa would toot on the horn, doot, doot, you know, and we'd wave at him and he'd wave back. But that was really great. But that was one of the highlights in the uh the wrestler for me is when Superstar and uh, Marty O'Neill are talking because that, that's a classic Superstar. He was just great on the mic, you know. Yeah. There's actually an interview uh, you can find online if you type in Road Warriors AWA Thanksgiving interview. Mm -hmm. And Marty O'Neill's trying to interview them. And it, this interview just keeps falling off the rails uh -huh. <laughs> no matter how hard they try. And Marty is just there trying to stay straight laced the whole time and like hawks grabbing like a an entire turkey thigh and he's starting to eat it and he's trying not to laugh because he's choking on it and they're just going <laughs> back and forth and then at the end of it the greatest thing in the world marty o'neill goes like he puts the mic down he thinks the camera's off and you hear him go god damn it hawk will you fucking act like a professional <laughs> <laughs> well so later on uh, it, so we'll fast forward and, and so Impaler was playing at Milwaukee Metal Fest and 
Mad Dog and the Butcher had a table set up and they were signing autographs nice. and selling uh, merchandise. And I told Mad Dog that story, you know, about how we used to drive by and see Marty was- Water and his guys. And he's, the thing about Marty O'Neill is he was a true gentleman. He was the same off camera as on camera. He was a true gentleman. That's <laughs> from the Mad Dog, that was, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Mad Dog's the best. Still the greatest story ever was Mad Dog on an air. Literally, they're on a plane flying from one town to the other. Mad you gotta, Dog. You got to hear Greg Dania tell the story. He tells a really good. Jesse told it, too, on his radio show. That's the first time I heard that story about the plane yeah, and the yeah. be- and opening the door on the plane. Yeah, yeah. literally. They're in midair flight. And he goes, Have you ever heard? come on, brothers. Never. Oh, you got to hear it. You, you got to just... Right now on Jim Cornette's podcast. Uh, oh, good. You do listen. I was going to suggest you listen to that because you would probably really like it, but you already do. So. Yeah. So Greg Gagne tells the story to, to Jim Cornette, and it's, uh, it's okay. pretty awesome. Yeah, you should look it up. And I, watch. I might have heard it then, yeah, because I listen to his podcast all the time. Do you listen to the 605 Super Podcast too? No, I don't think I've ever listened. No. That's the one that he he's with uh, Jim Cornette. He's, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Brian Last. Brian don't Last, yeah. Don't do I, it. I like his. Yeah, it takes like too long. Every episode. oh yeah, it's like a four hour episode. But every episode, it's Ishtar. It's yeah. fucking Ishtar every time. <laughs> <laughs> like, it fuck. Is. You gotta listen to it. You know, throughout the day. You know. No, like I'll give you an example. They just did a two part series about the Wrestling Observer Awards. Yeah. <laughs> because they're pissed off how the new awards show went out. Uh, the new the new awards came out, yeah. and it's eight hours. <laughs> Eight hours analyzing a awards show. Or analyzing what Dave Meltzer, who's never took a bump, who's never done anything in the business, and and how pissed off they are that he put Kenny Omega into a fictional Hall of Fame that doesn't <laughs> exist. Yeah. There's no building. There's nothing. There's nothing. Yeah, he's he's got to shorten that show a little bit. Oh Jesus! It's it's fucking Ishtar. It's the worst fucking. <laughs> it's it's it, and it's and it's just. Uh, I mean, once in a while, there's gems on there. Like I found the like he posted yesterday the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. It is the uh, oh god the uh, <laughs> Jim Londos Tijuana Bible. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know what a Tijuana Bible is. Back in the 20s and 30s and 40s, before stag films came out and pornography magazines were not allowed, they would make these pornography cartoons. Okay. And so they made one of Jim Londos meeting <laughs> a Greek girl after one of the wrestling matches. <laughs> and it has some of the most disturbing images. And you know what? I got to read one line from it because it's the one <laughs> line. This is for you. Like poetry. <laughs> I gotta read. I think I sent it to you, Wayne, didn't I? No, you did not. Uh, I'll be sending that to you today, here, sir. You, sent, so you, you sent me a video of you wrestling, though, recently, and that was pretty funny. Yeah, that's <laughs> really good. Sorry about that. You pissed me off, so I had to send you something terrible. <laughs> I sent you that. Okay, so um, yeah, here we go. Oh, Mr. Londos, they told me all about you. I think you're marvelous. Ah, it goes, uh, Ah, I just a push him out of the ring and poof, they scrap it's over just like that. They get along nice, eh? Sure, Nick. Pull the curtain shut. Maybe like to do some wrestling moves to themselves. Then, here comes the line right here. This is so terrible. Oh, honey, what are you doing? What? Greasing my asshole? Why, Jimmy? Don't you know you don't <laughs> that? to a Greek girl? Oh, and why not? <laughs> Why we all have to do is shit a little. It starts perfectly, and when it gets warm, it smells so delightful. <laughs> what the? This is some scrawny big booger balls. Man, and, and I thought the best thing I was going to hear today was uh, Kelsey Grammer, a sideshow Bob on The Simpsons, attempt at uh, hitting on a chick by saying, Hey, miss, capital knockers. <laughs> that takes the cake right there. Well, I'll just attach that to the show. Send that to me. I'll, I'll attach I just it sent it to Wayne all of the uh, 
all of the pages to that Tijuana Bible. So great. And Bill, send me that picture that you you took with uh, uh, Jerry Lowe too. That'd be really cool. I'll put that part on the screen too. I'll definitely do it. When I right don't now. think you can show this. No, on whenever the you're gonna. Oh, I'm, I'm you, gonna show it. Of course, I'm gonna show it. Of course, I am. <laughs> but pass it on to all three of these fine gentlemen so they can yeah. see it. Just yeah. don't let your wife see it. She might think you're getting some bad ideas. <laughs> But getting back to music a little bit for a change here, uh, you've been posting a lot of stuff about Alice Cooper lately. I know I you're have? huge, yeah. Um, yeah, that's because uh, what was it? Killer just had an anniversary and Muscle yeah. Love. Yeah, usually like when there's like an album that's uh, a, a really big one for me, I just like uh, you know tell it happy birthday yeah yeah so you, you you said you loved muscle love and i was like i don't know how anybody loves muscle love that was one of my least favorite out Al- of the alice cooper band uh era alice cooper albums yeah i mean i wouldn't put it at my top of the if you were putting them in favorite you know but just like anything with that it's lineup is amazing to me yeah it, it's you know there's lots of gems on there in my mind i like uh quite a bit of it you know uh what is it? Eight songs on that one? Eight or nine? I'd have to say seven I of them. Th- really... I think it's nine altogether, but I think one of those is an intro to one of the songs. Well, there's Crazy Little Child and Man with the Golden Gun. And yeah, those... oh, but... I love Man with the Golden Gun. That's such a yeah, great song. Yeah, they were trying to get that on the James Bond. Uh, I know. I wish yeah. they would have picked that it. Could been you imagine too. Christopher Lee coming out to a Alice Cooper song? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, especially in a Bond movie. What? Uh, but you know they're huge. They said James Bond and West Side Story. A lot of those soundtracks were influential to them, and like how they constructed songs and things like that. So mm. that would have been cool if they would have gotten that uh, oh, into yeah. the movie. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. And, yeah um, they put out pretties for you too, and that's uh, you know. Yes, that, <laughs> it's a little strange. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Hey, yeah, I mean, I've of, always uh, liked it. I mean, I, it was like I always get, I I had to have all those Alice Cooper albums, especially with the original band, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they all mean something to me. Did you follow when that band broke up and left? Did you follow that album that they did, the Billion Dollars uh, Baby? Yeah, album? oh yeah, I've got that. I've got a deluxe CD version where they have the one of the live shows that they did because they only played okay. a few times live and it imploded. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and actually, I ended up, I got to sing uh, Schools Out with Michael Bruce, because we went to see Michael oh, really? Bruce at a little sports bar. There must have been maybe 25 people there, like on a Wednesday night. And uh, yeah, so we were standing up in the front the whole time and, uh, you know, singing and, you know, along with them and stuff. And uh, and then when they were doing their encore, he goes, come up, come, you guys come up. He took me and a couple of friends up and we sang uh, the background to Schools Out with them, you know, because it's got the big anthematic yeah. background vocals awesome. for us so yeah so that was pretty cool i got a picture with him too i can send you that too send me that too that's yeah. awesome that's yeah. real cool yeah what'd you what'd you think about the alice cooper when the, when the band left what'd you think about like the next era of alice cooper albums like when it got to that like a uh, punky type I, greg loves that what's that album um special forces, special forces. That's yeah. Oh, yeah. i was just Ooh, about to mention yeah special forces. uh but, so, Bill, they just did a uh, record store day release last month of a live show from that tour from Glasgow in 82. From which tour? Spe- the which Special tour? Forces tour. Oh, right on. Yeah. Well, yeah. Th- th- that was actually the last one he did until Constrictor because he was so bad with free basing and whatnot. They didn't tour behind Zipper, Catch a Skin, or Dada. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but But it's a great show. I'll have to check it out. The very first, so Welcome to My Nightmare, I loved it. And it was the first concert I ever saw was that tour. And uh, I thought that that one, that's a solid, probably his best solo album is Mm. Welcome to My Nightmare. And uh, I like uh, quite a bit that on uh, Goes to Hell. Mm. And so like on every album, there's like some songs that I really like, you know, but not the whole album. Yeah, it went that way for a while, but yeah. I don't listen to what he does because I love him, you know. Mm. Did you hear the new one that he just put out? The brand new one, the yeah. Detroit, yeah, yep. Detroit stories. No, I have not heard that yet. 
It's on I, my to-do I, list. I heard a little bit sample of it. It sounds pretty cool. It, I mean, it sounds like newer Alice Cooper, so it's like, you know. Yeah. It's okay. It's good. It's okay. You know, it's one of those things. You know, I got to say, though, um, I know there's a lot of people that aren't crazy about what he's done since the 2000s, but um, I always really liked Dirty Diamonds from 2005. That one, I think, is as much of a classic as the 70s material. I can agree with that. I like that album a lot, actually. So that was I can a really agree with good that. one. Yeah. There's, there's like five or six really great, solid songs on there that I did listen over and over and over and over again to. So I'm on board with you on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I went, I, I saw that tour. I actually saw him play uh, what's really a playhouse amphitheater in uh, Virginia called Wolf Trap. So the acoustics were amazing. And that was just a really cool show because he was going back and he was doing, um, you know, songs from albums he hadn't done in a while too. Uh, I think the encore actually opened with Wish I Was Born in Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. From, huh. from the inside and yeah. that was really neat yeah. yeah yeah i mean he's got such a deep catalog you know when you go to see him he always kind of mixes in a few deep cuts every once in a while that really surprise you you know like uh, oh yeah um and it, he, he's funny too because of how cool he is and um he, i've met him a couple times and uh when i was telling him how much i love special forces he was like you know what i'm glad you love it so much because i don't remember a thing about this record <laughs> or the tour yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah he was in pretty bad shape thanks that's a great song though who do we think we are oh special i love forces. that whole I mean, that's a great that song one's a- 10 out of 10 for me. Um, I re- he really hit what he was trying to do with that one, and he had a good band behind him. I mean, uh, Dwayne Hitchings from uh, the final lineup of Cactus. He's always had great musicians with him, you know, during his solo career. Oh, yeah. He and... stole, stole Lee's, Lou Reed's band and actually gave him something good to do. Yeah. That was, <laughs> that was really amazing to see them too, you know, back when I saw the Welcome to My Nightmare tour because it was yeah, Dick Wagner and awesome. Steve Hunter, like two amazing guitar players. And uh, yeah, he showcased them and the, they were showcased in the show. They're all dressed like more t- old school morticians with the black top hats and the half capes and stuff. And it was cool. Yeah. So I have an Impaler question. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Where is the Minnesota Iceman? I think he's down in the Museum of the Weird in Austin, <laughs> Texas right now. I think that's where they have him. Okay. I was just trying. <laughs> I had to do that. I'm sorry. I keep track of him so, you know, that people can't catch me off guard with that question. Yeah. <laughs> that's an amazing story. I mean, that, that whole story was on uh, Unsolved Mysteries with Stacey Keach, you know, back yeah. in. Yeah. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yeah, it? Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, tell us. Because I don't think Wayne knows know. about that. Oh, I'm well, sure Nate don't because he's only like 10 years old. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Minnesota Iceman. So it was this guy back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, he would uh, he went to carnivals and uh, grocery stores openings, you know, little to do's. And he had this uh, Minnesota, this Bigfoot that was encased in uh, a block of ice. And so then he charged people, you know, 25 cents or whatever to come walk through and see it. So I'm an older guy. So when I, back in the day, they used to have the exploitive kind of um, shows at the state fair, you know, where you could go see Bigfoot and walk through a tent and see a guy with elephantitis, you know, reading the book. And uh, so uh, (laughs) it was like that. So he had this little setup. And so the book was he reading? (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I tried to stop myself. <laughs> I, I was trying so hard. Al Jaffe's mad magazine. That best of Al Jaffe. Great stuff. expectations. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so he. I'm uh, sick of hearing these jokes about my giant hand. <laughs> I've been he doing like a or Fat Albert. You I've know, been doing Mad Libs or something maybe. Well, they used to have a really cool thing, too, called Zambora the Jungle Girl. That was this uh, illusion where um, you come in the tent and you sit down and you're sitting in this tent and it's Zambora the Jungle Girl. She's this beautiful, you know, it's a, a model or what, somebody they dug up the back, a like Carney's girlfriend dressed in like a Jane outfit. And like right before your eyes, she like transforms into this giant gorilla. And then the gorilla busts out of the chains and runs down and everybody in the tent scatters and runs out, oh, awesome. you know, into the 
into the fairgrounds, you know. It's like <laughs> stuff that they could never get away with nowadays. Yeah. I got so exuberant there, I pulled my, <laughs> my ear off. So, so yeah. So <laughs> so this guy would take this uh this Bigfoot nice around to all these different showings. And so this guy became interested in it and um he was a scientist and he had there was a, a toe or a finger or something that was kind of exposed out of the ice and he took some scrapings and uh, he, uh, his findings were like that there's something legitimate about this. And he went to the Smithsonian Institute and he wanted to get backing or funding, you know, to investigate this thing more, delve into it more. And then the guy and the Bigfoot disappeared and no one saw them again. So uh, it was on the, unsolved mysteries with stacy keach you know like what they told the whole wow. story about it and and what happened to the guy and where did this go and and now the museum of the weird down in austin has i don't know if it's a replica but wow. what, what he had you know it was in a big like a freezer bin in ice and, well, and a similar replica or maybe it's really the minnesota ice man i'm, I'm going to be honest with you uh i follow that story very very much so, uh, to the point where me and a friend of mine, Jeff, we are planning in uh, February to go uh, Bigfoot hunting in in Kentucky. Because yeah, awesome. We've seen all the stories, and we've already planned out a weekend where we're actually going Bigfoot hunting, going squashing. <laughs> yeah, we're going squashing. <laughs> but, Maybe we'll do a video review. We'll bring our GoPro, so it could be like a rat style review spe- video special. <laughs> wait, wait, I, why? That's- I and think here's the part thing. where we found nothing, and here's the other part where we found nothing. No, here's the problem. Game. Tracking has proven that there is something in the woods in this area of Kentucky where we're going. There's been too much tracking to prove it. It's not Bigfoot. Wait, it's well, just well, someone wait. who's really inbred. He's like wait. Leatherface. Well, no, no. I, I think that's part of his whole scientific thing with this. <laughs> He's smart enough to go to Kentucky where there's a control group where they can view these inbred <laughs> fellows in the wild and then they actually see the big one. That's brilliant. Put them side by side. Whoever side knew way. Deliverance was well, a documentary. But... <laughs> well, look, either way, we're going squashing. We're bringing the high power. That's amazing. We're bringing the high powered rifles. I'm bringing something back. Oh, don't hurt them. No, I'm not going <laughs> to hurt them. It's to protect us from yeah, the other like... humans so we can have yeah, that, that's what you, Yeah, that's about it. The best sign I have ever seen. About, I, I do find all that interesting, although I am highly skeptical of it. But when we were going to a any NA meeting one time through the uh, uh, swamp areas out there in the panhandle of Florida, actually a town away from where we saw the dwarf tossing league night poster. And that, that was tons of fun, but I've told that story before. But um they were having a, a squatch meeting or whatever, but the sign that advertised it just said, you seen squatch Monday, <laughs> 730. <laughs> it's like it's a fucking history channel show. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to get squatch. I promise you, I'm bringing back Sasquatch home with us. If it not, it's fun, not anybody can do it. It's you, brother. You're damn right. I hope so. Uh, before I forget, because you we talked about this at the be- very beginning of the show, the wrestling song that uh, with the dead people. Who were the? What's the last wrestler you're up to on that song? The or the most recent one that died? Oh, uh, let me look it up here. He's got, got the list. <laughs> but I've got the lyrics here. Um, it's um, you know, I started with the older school guys, you know, yeah, yeah. so. Uh, Whoever the newest dead wrestlers have. Uh, Andre was a giant among men, managed by Bobby the Brain Heenan. Uh, all have taken that ride in a hearse. Owens, Long Fall, Bon Eric, Curse. Uh, the chorus is wherever a mighty ra- grappler dies, the ringside bell tolls ten long chimes. Mick Foley died a thousand times. Dead wrestlers heaven, where they reside. Uh, the Crusher, Vern Gagne, uh, Mad Dog Vashon, Bruiser Brody, Brody, or was he King Kong? Uh, Pullman Guerrero died in our town. Uh, Macho Man and the Warrior, both heaven bound. So I guess Ma- Macho Man, or no, the Warrior would probably be the Harley Race was good and was bad. Piper Harley's Death, the, Harley's the last. Yeah. yeah. 
So that's did planned. you hear the story of how Harley got to die in his house? No. Uh-uh. So Trevor Murdoch uh, wrestled for the WWE. He's a student of Harley races and everything like that. Harley was actually in the hospital here in Atlanta. And uh, they knew it was coming towards the last couple of days. Harley wanted to go home. He wanted to die in his house, uh, surrounded by his family. They couldn't afford the flight. Mm. Trevor called the WWE offices, spoke to Hunter. Mm-hmm. 15 minutes later, he goes back up to the room. They're like, yeah, we're getting ready to pack him to put him on the helicopter. No joke. As soon as Hunter hung up the phone with them, they called the hospital. They called Emory. And they paid for the helipad to take him back to St. Louis so he could die in his house. Wow. And they yeah. paid for the funeral. They paid for everything. Wow. That's cool. I like to hear that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, he gave so much to wrestling fans, you know. Well, when... you see, writing a song like that's got to be hard, especially if you look at that 98 to 2012 era of wrestling where everybody under 40 was just dropping dead. Like there was like a death clock of wrestlers who were dying under the age of 40 and the clock just wouldn't make it 45 days. Yeah. It was, I mean, I saw, I saw Brian Pullman's last uh, match against gold dust here. Paul, you know, the night before the paper arrow died on the strip. Uh, Yeah. Must be who the dictators were talking about, what they're talking about, the Minnesota Strip. You ever hear that, the dictators? Yeah. Yep. No. Yeah. I've heard, so, I know who they are. Yeah. yeah. On their first album, Go Girl Crazy, they have a, a song called The Minnesota Strip. But, yeah, it, yeah. it was just really sad, and I'm glad the business has changed. Um, but what else do we have coming up with Impaler here in the near future? Any maybe live? Well, just work on this new album, you know, it just came out. It just, just came just, to, just actually, was, it's not even technically released yet. Right. It was supposed to be released yeah. on the fifth, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Krampus not supposed to be the release date. You know, um, usually we do this big Mary Krampus show every, every December. And obviously we weren't going to be able to do it this year. So we decided to make that the release date for the album so that we'd, you know, have some kind of way to celebrate the, the happening. You guys know know about Krampus, right? You know, oh yeah, yeah. very loosely, but we do. Yeah. That's what me and Wade are going to do next year. Greatest, he, what better heavy metal Christmas icon is there than Krampus? You know, it's just like <laughs> he, he looks like the devil and he beats bad kids, and you know. So anyway, are you sure he's we, not the baby face in this one, brother? Mm, he could be. There might be a twist at the end. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, and it ended up it and 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 this was a refreshing thing because usually when an album is coming out, it gets delayed, and, and you you know you you think you have a release date and something happens at the plant or some mm-hmm. weird thing, but this time it actually showed up early, you know. So it was mm-hmm. like, so that was cool. So we've been mm-hmm. having this pre-sale on it, and it's been going really really well. So just kind of still working that getting moved into my new house and getting used to a new job and, and just, uh, you know, plugging away and moving forward. Yeah. So if anybody wants to get the new album, where, where do they go to get it? Well, right now we're offering it through PayPal. So if they go impaler shock rock at email.com is the PayPal and it's uh, $15 post paid in the United States only. It's so crazy. It's it costs like fifteen bucks to mail that thing to Canada, and it's just like yeah. I can't charge people another fifteen bucks on top of it, and I can't afford to to pay that kind of postage to send it to them either. So it's in the U.S. only, unfortunately. But right. yeah, that's uh, crazy. And then uh, in February, uh, MVD, our distributor in Oaks, Pennsylvania, they'll um, they'll have it, and it'll be uh, available digitally. Okay. Uh, the digital outlets uh, itunes and spotify and all that february 6th oh cool yeah right, cool and now if we uh somebody orders the album from you uh you gonna, can you autograph it yeah if they like if they want it scribbled on you know all right like, well, i will be ordering one. Oh shit what's that what sorry sorry <laughs> yeah we're doing a show here <laughs> He's got no uh sting just signed with aew oh well we already knew that was coming i didn't yeah, I heard about that. 
Uh, uh, yeah, they took all his stuff off the WWE shop, so I, you know, everybody was speculating. That's, well, uh, that's. Uh, well, you're I, I'm, I'm going to definitely order an album, and I want you to autograph it. So. Yeah, definitely. And uh, then next year, Wayne, me and you, we're going up in December, and we're going to go to your big Krumpus show. Me and Wayne are coming up for that. We're going to do a live Red Salad review from your concert. <laughs> oh, yes. Should. Come on up here, Wayne. And we're going to we're gonna set That's Wayne a long on ride. fire. <laughs> hey, <laughs> don't worry about it, Wayne. Even Play tickets walk. are cheap now. It is a very long right. book. We're gonna we'll come drive up you over by uh, Lake Calhoun and let you see the original uh, area where they used to tape the, the AWA uh, oh, hell yeah. studio shows. I would absolutely shows. love that. And I want to go back to, oh, fuck, what was that restaurant with the honey butter fucking waffles? Mm. It was like this famous diner in uh, Minneapolis. Mickey's Dining Car. Mickey's, yes. Oh, Mickey's, yeah, there's two of them. There's one in Saint, downtown St. Paul and there's one on 7th Street in St. Paul. But definitely yeah. come up there. We're going to set Wayne on fire and he's going to get hit by a barbed wire chair by you. Know? <laughs> <laughs> it's better for the it, show, Ron. <laughs> oh, hell, for... my band can open and then Wayne can fucking see us play too. There we Two go. Birds with one star. Right on. so you got and a video? We can, around, we can drive around uh, Lake Minnetonka and see the old Gagne man over there. Yes. And we can Gagne get fucking those waters too. Hmm? Get What's that? Those waters too. Yeah, Blake Minnesota. Come on, Purple Rain! Yes, yes, yes. I don't know. Um, do you plan on making a video? <laughs> do you plan on making a video for any of the songs off of the album? Well, you know, it's funny you say that. I had a call, a, a, a text from this guy. He's really good. He he was just asking me about doing a video for it. So I, I told him I had to talk to you guys tonight. So I talked to him tomorrow night about it. So, yeah. So I guess well, yeah, there'll be something in the works. Uh, he he did a video for a local band here called Wolf Mask, and uh, uh, Zach and I played serial killers in it. I should send you that, a link to that so you could yeah. watch that. Yeah, yeah that was a lot of fun. Uh, he's a great photographer and, and uh, videographer and uh, really creative. So, so anyway, I'm going to talk to him tomorrow night and we're going to talk about doing something. Any idea which song you might want to do? Or? Well, I'm I'm thinking you might want to do Kram, uh, Krampus Has Returned, maybe, but I don't know. I'm just speculating. Mm. I yeah. think Thermonuclear Man would be pretty cool, too. I love the lyrics to that one. Yeah, that oh, one's great. Yeah, I that dug Thermonuclear Man. That's so first album, boy, I'm on, like, I mean, I'm wearing a carnivore shirt. Yes. Like, yeah. Thermonuclear Warrior. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Warriors That's of Ice. Oh, dude. Thermon Crush, Warrior, some kill, of the best lyrics I've ever heard. That's the fucking patch I have. Yeah, dude, yeah, I love the tape artwork. Nice. I love Crush Peter Steele. Peter Steele is so too. awesome. Peter Veal, gotta love him. <laughs> Peter Steele used to call this one Chinese restaurant right across the street from Duff's to order chicken fingers, and he'd always demand that they uh, make sure that the claws were take that the claws were included. <laughs> <laughs> And as long as it wasn't touching the mashed potatoes, he was good. Yes. I guess he didn't like to have his food he, touched. You know. uh, he <laughs> had these World War II plates, the World War II dining plates that were uh -huh. sectionized. Oh, yeah. That's God. all he would eat out of because he did not want his food to touch unless it was like a fucking goulash or something. That's the only time it could touch. Yeah. I miss that son of a bitch. I wish he was still alive. I, Why did you get to have never seen anything that he did? Did you get huh? to play with him? Did you do a show with him or, or no, but I went to see many, you know. I just I just loved his work, you know. Yeah. I never met him. Oh. I just said hi to Johnny one time at a show. That was about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that was the closest I came. Actually, I think I saw his last show. Did you? Right before really? right the uh, actually a day or two before he died, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Awesome. And at that show we could tell like he just didn't look right because he was just standing there just singing the songs and my friend who would see typo all the time he was like you know something's going on here because he would be like all over the place mm -hmm. and he was just like stationary the whole entire show uh -huh. so you could tell something was wrong that's yeah. when he gained all the weight and everything yeah that yeah, was, was the last was one that was the too, yeah. the new york one yeah 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 that was after he moved to pennsylvania already and everything yeah yeah it very was sad bad very lot. sad yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks, Wayne. Good fucking downer to bring Way us to down. Wait the show, right? <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole. Well, hey, Bill's hey. Uh, album's called The Great Hereafter, so it all kind of ties in, right? Yes. That's right. It's music for the afterlife. It's I think the tagline for the album, or to sell the album, is uh, uh, 
eight new impaler tracks to, uh, that will flip your coffin lid. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I like that. Do you have a, a copy of the album there with you so you can show people or no? Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> I don't go taken, anywhere. Like the, that could be taken in the meaning of this album will make you really horny. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I don't know if it's glaring. I'll move it over a little bit this Slip way. A little more. There we go. There a little bit up. Oh, nice. I like there it. It's built on the front cover there. What was that? Axe in your hand? Yeah. yeah. Flaming Halo right. and <laughs> some wings. Right. Yeah. Actually, that uh, the guy I'm going to talk about the video uh, did this album cover for us and did the okay. layout for the. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yes. Yeah. So he does good work. Very good. Sweet. I'm oh, everybody. To see that. Kind of Thank you for having me again. Yeah, I love. Yeah, thanks for coming back on. I love bullshitting about wrestling and stuff. Obviously, I think I'm gonna have to have you on my show too. I was just gonna say you're gonna have to go on. Yeah, let's do it. Bring beyond Bushido, so we're definitely gonna exchange information once this is done. All right. Yeah, then maybe I'll come on too, and I can interrupt you for once. Uh... You're goddamn right. (laughs) (laughs) But um, actually, while we're all talking, um. Bill's been posting a lot of Alice Cooper and Aerosmith, like we were uh, saying before. And uh, to to be honest, I've never really been all that fond of Aerosmith. But based on some of what you've been posting, Bill, I've been going back and listening to it. And I was going to say, we should all get together and do something about Aerosmith sometime. Aerosmith, yeah. I I saw Aerosmith all the time back in the 70s, like every year. Talk this way, yeah. <laughs> Still don't like that song, but <laughs> and back in the seventies, they were just the, just you know, just sleazy yeah. rock. I don't know. They just I've, there's something magical about them. I've always loved rocks because of that, and but it was only ever really that record. I don't know if it was so much the hits from the other albums that uh, turned me off, but what? God, what was the one you were talking about? Draw the line. I listened mm-hmm. to it in its entirety yesterday, and I loved it. So yeah, it's a great one. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, Kings and Queens. That's an amazing, great song. Great song. Yeah, that, epic. that was my favorite song on it. Honestly, definitely epic. <laughs> Do you like Aerosmith, Wayne? Oh yeah, of course. Yep, I have all the albums right up there. Even the latest album that they put out. Yeah, even I really didn't. It's listen just to there's it. certain bands I'll just buy everything. Kiss, you know. I mean, after Ace left, I didn't buy as I wasn't. As no, interested. we want the space ace, not the fake ace. <laughs> yeah, ace is my guy. They gotta what bring you... Ace back for this final. Ace tour. has gone yeah. from Starman to Moon. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the new Kiss thing? What they're going to perform in Dubai and do a live show? Have you seen heard about that? Yeah, I saw something. In Did past. you see the the ticket prices for that thing? No, I didn't. <laughs> but there's a lot of rich people in Dubai, so I wouldn't be surprised, I guess. What are the ticket prices? I think the lowest one is $299. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it goes up from there. I think maybe $1,000. I don't know. Well, the people there are rich. They built the island, you know. For everybody to see Kiss again. Yeah, they're rich, and it's Dubai, and, you know, it does cost a lot to put it on, and you know they're not going to do it for free. So No, I definitely know they're not going to do it for free, but... Well, that's all right. Whatever. I'm not going to watch it. Um, can who? Do you have a website or anything people can go to, or is everything on Facebook? Yeah, it's just Facebook. Everything so just Impaler, Facebook. Yeah, if I was professional, I'd know what it is. Let me see. <laughs> no, every time I ask a band, what's your Facebook or website? Yeah, I don't know. worry. I don't know any of our handles <laughs> I either. Think it's just Impaler. <laughs> Uh, I think it's Impaler Shock Rock or something. That's sometime. right, Impaler Shock Rock. All right, Facebook Oops. Impaler Shock Rock. And, uh, yeah, please go find it on Facebook. Yeah. So, oh, that's MySpace. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Impaler Shock Rock uh, uh, or Impaler Horror Rock, one of the two. How would I find that? I'll have to have Cassie come down here and show me. <laughs> well, I'll put it in the description in the show notes or whatever. I'll put the correct link up there oh, so I people can find it. it. Okay, yeah. thank you. People will find yeah. that, and then they can go and uh, buy the new album off you. And do you have all the older albums too? It's like if anybody wants the older stuff, or no? Um, some of the stuff's out of print, but yeah, I mean, we try and keep uh, a lot of it available for things have been repressed, so things aren't on yeah. like uh, the like the root of all evil um, pressing of um, the gruesome years is is that's sold out, and uh, a place out in Rhode Island, uh, 
old cemetery records repressed it so mm. we have that again and undead things was out of print for a long time and and they repressed that so yeah we i mean it just depends what they're looking for yeah. um, and luckily a lot of it can be found on spotify you can right, find right. a lot of the albums on there which i enjoy listening to them on there yeah I, yeah, I really actually enjoyed your live album that you had put out, Are We Dead Yet? That one I had a lot of fun listening to. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is that, I don't know if Live at First Avenue is on Spotify or any of that stuff, because I don't think, um, I don't know, that was like a real limited pressing, and I don't even think MVD put it out digitally. I'm still no, trying to uh, get that 8-track, damn it. <laughs> that's the 7th Street Entry. Yeah, the 7th yeah. Street Entry show. That was like yep. uh, from 1984. Yeah, that, yeah. I have one of the eight tracks. Again, it's in a box, but yeah, it's on eight that, tracks. That was such a cool idea. Oh, my God. Yeah. I knew I would have had an eight track tape of my music back when I had an eight track tape player in my <laughs> Super Beetle. <I> think. <laughs> Bonkers. Any plans to reissue some of the uh, albums that are out of print? On vinyl or? Or just on CD, on vinyl oh, either. Yeah. Doesn't matter. yeah. I mean, we're open to, you know, if a, if a label comes along and says that they want to do something like that, we're mm. we work with them. Yeah, mm. that's how Old Cemetery ended up putting those out. And then um, they also put out a, a seven inch EP that we did. Um, thirty thirty years and rising. We did a four song EP, so okay. that one's on vinyl. Right. Um, yeah. We should all start emailing High Roller Records. You know, they do a lot of archive releases. Of- from 80s bands like that and they do a real good job with it they're based out of germany but mm-hmm. yeah but i'm just yeah. gonna start harassing in touch with us if there's something that they want you know i'll, I'll see if i can dig it up for them no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> very cool well don't leave i want to ask you to do one thing after we finish this show as long as you have time right you have time sure yeah. okay cool all He's right well got please digging in his head even <laughs> What's really, that? No, that ever meant. On, no. <laughs> Anthrax got the time. Oh, <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't pick up on that one. Come on, Wayne, the really? That's what the crap the song kind of reminds me of. Has got the Boo! That was the first thing I thought of. thing, but it's too late here. All right, well, Bill, thank you very much again for coming on the show. And the new album is awesome. Well, the three th- songs that I heard, but I'm sure the rest of it's going to be just as good. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks for having me and talking about all my favorite stuff. That's always a good time. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of good fun on here. And uh, please go visit ratsoundreview.com and go please check out Eric Adams' show, uh, Beyond Bushido. They are on our network as well. Watches uh, Japanese wrestling and UFC stuff, right, Eric? Uh, yeah, Japanese uh, work shoot and uh, MMA. We're up to the pride years now. But uh, I've been getting a real itch to show some more wrestling recently, so we're going to bring some more wrestling back especially since i found some uncovered gems that i hadn't seen in a while <laughs> right and, uh, nice. so if you get a chance of course uh my article i release every week the many failures that 14 year old me would never see coming it's <laughs> on uh ring the damn bell dot wordpress.com it's been some fun articles of sharing with everybody my foibles in the world of professional wrestling and uh many more failures to come <laughs> and nate What's going on with the... What the hell's the name of your band again? Nature Malfunction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I catch it at every show. <laughs> yeah. It's very forgettable. Wow. What? <laughs> How rude. No, What's going on? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just going on. Fan, I That's an awesome name, yeah. actually. Major Malfunction. <laughs> Thank you. What's no, your major a... malfunction pile? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> But I don't, you sent me that uh, song that you just uh, mixed or whatever, and yeah, it sounds really, stuff. really good. So what's going on? Thank you. Um, we're gonna get a lyric video up and get that up to YouTube, and then try to get that on band or on Bandcamp and that kind of shit. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Start getting all that kind of Everybody networking to... going. Get the rest of the EP recorded. All that junk. Yeah. Well, cool. Everybody needs to hear it, so get it done. Oh, I, before oh, I forget, I just sent it what's over that? to David White. You should. Yeah. I before I forget. In uh, tribute to your Minnesota roots, I uh, wore something very special today, sir. We can't. Well, <laughs> you disappeared. <laughs> he disappeared. <laughs> oh, shit. I had an early pair of Zubas. I see him. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. My Zubas. Yeah. Oh, God, I had yeah. a soda original. 
I had an original <laughs> pair uh, that early on that uh, uh, we got from uh, Hawk and Animals Gym. Yeah. But, yeah. They were selling them there, like just on the rack there. That's how it all started, kind of. Yep. Like, that That's was how it all started. Yeah. Yeah. Zubas, man, they're comfy. Yes, damn right. Never That's why I own, well, I own shorts and pants. <laughs> All right. Ratsoundreview.com. Uh, find us on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. Just search Rat Sound Review on Google or whatever, and you will find us. All right. We will see you guys next time. And again, thank you very much, Bill, Lindsay. Please go buy the thank new you. Impaler album, The Great Hereafter, and we will see you guys next time. Adios. Bye. 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 All right. Uh,